$100. It's a lot of money. And today I'm gonna see how far I can stretch it at Trader Joe's for a family of four. So excited, it's been about a month. So since I know a lot of you guys haven't been to Trader Joe's since quarantine, I wanted to share a little bit about my experience. So upon going up to the store, there's a huge long line, social distancing practice. You have to stand six feet apart. And on this day, it was 100 degrees. So luckily they had tents covering the first half of the line. I was in the back for quite a bit, but it was probably only five minutes. Things move pretty rapidly depending on the time of day that you go. And this was right before lunchtime, so there were a little bit more people there. So typically when I enter a grocery store, I usually head on over to the produce station first, or at Trader Joe's, the produce area first. I usually like to make sure I get enough fruit and vegetables for the week, so this week I grabbed a few things. Eventually as I got in, I was able to find and buy everything I needed. However, once you get to the checkout, things changed a little bit. I used to be able to go right up to the checking stand to see when they processed my food to check me out. However, this time they just take your cart and then you have to stand back six feet. So I told Charlie, who was my checker, to let me know whenever you get close to $100 because I need to make sure that I meet my challenge this week. So he did and we made a few swap outs. However, in the process, I think I might have gotten him in trouble because his manager came by and said, well, first yelled at me and say, you need to stand back six feet. I'm like, I'm sorry, I just need to see it. But he was super nice and he said, no, there was an issue. We need to sort this out. And he was totally cool with it. And she's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know. So it was totally fine. But she did tell him, please go wash your hands after this. I didn't even touch him. It's fine, it's fine. I want everyone to be safe. I just hope I didn't get him in trouble. But they seem to be fine with it after all. So finally, once he finished, I put my three items back. We ended up at $103.20. First off, we have bananas. Bananas at Trader Joe's are super cheap. They're 19 cents each and they last. I usually like to get really green ones, but since it's so hot right now, it's like 100 degrees outside, they ripened pretty quickly. For one, two, three, four, five, six, 20 cents each, this is about $1.20. The next thing I was super excited to find were these tomatoes. These are dry farmed early girl tomatoes and you typically only find them for a short period, usually September, August through October. So basically just like a month and a half. But they are the best tomatoes I have ever tried in my life. Imagine like a sweet tomato that tastes almost like a cherry that's not I don't know, I, it's just really, really delicious. They're great for salads or just plain snacking because they're really that good. A little on the pricey side, but I definitely think they're worth it just because they're not in season for super long. I did get other tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, and these are typically what you'd find at farmer's market. They're a little fancier, they're a little more meaty. Um, I bought some materials to make this recipe I saw on Jamie Oliver's channel recently that looked super delicious and I thought these would be perfect for them. For other veggies, I also got some organic broccoli florets. These are super easy because if we are having like a quick pasta or rice or just chicken, I just roast these up in the air fryer and we have a side of vegetables. I also got some organic Persian cucumbers. These cucumbers, these cucumbers are a bit smaller. They're really crisp and they're just great for snacking. I usually feed these to the kids. I'll just chop them up into small circles, very thinly sliced. That's how they like to eat them and we serve them with lunch. Or sometimes I'll show you guys my favorite way to snack with them after I go through all the materials. So Trader Joe's isn't really known for their fresh produce, so I usually only stick to a few items, like these organic zucchinis. They're usually pretty good just because I find that zucchinis last a long time, but these are really good. I tend to buy other fresher produce at Whole Foods or Sprouts. However, Trader Joe's is a great place to find prepackaged salads. I'm a busy mom, so there are days when I don't get to eat until 3 p.m. and by then I am hangry. I just need something fast that I can throw together and these salad kits are the way to go. Um, whenever we cook, I always have leftover meats from the night before, so I just add some protein and Nate and I share one of these bags and that's lunch. <laughs> My favorite one is the Southwest chopped um, salad too. It's a little bit spicy. The sp 
Night yeah. night, CC. I do have to warn you that the dressing is a little spicy. I mean, it says spicy Southwest avocado dressing, but I wasn't aware of how spicy it would be until we tried it, but it's not like spicy in a bad way. It's just, it just took us by surprise, but it's still really good, the flavor. This lemony arugula basil salad kit. This is so refreshing. I can throw this with some watermelon, some grilled chicken, and it's such like the perfect flavor um, for summer. It just has that freshness from the lemony dressing and I really like it. Throw in some peaches too and it pairs really well. And then I also got this broccoli and kale slaw. I don't normally get this, but since I got that chicken, which I will tell you guys more about once I get to the meat section, um, I thought this would go well as a side dish and slaw is usually pretty good. It already comes with some sunflower seeds, dried blueberries, almond, and a creamy slaw dressing. The only thing is whenever I get like these slaw kits, I like making my own dressings so that we use up like healthier ingredients. I don't sometimes like all the sugar that comes with it. So that's what I do, but these two, are solid. Okay, so next up, we moved on over to the meat department. Now the meat department, I feel at Trader Joe's is really well priced and I usually find that they're decent quality. Like this 100% grass fed ground beef, it's also organic. I believe it was $5.99. Something like this at Whole Foods would run you about $6.99 or even $9.99 I think, depending on the brand. Same with this organic ground turkey, which was only $5.99 versus Whole Foods that's usually about $10 a pound. This one is exactly a pound for $5.99, so it's a great deal. I also really love buying Trader Joe's bacon, this uncured apple smoked bacon. It's a nice and thick cut slice, and it's just so flavorful. This is great for miso udon carbonara and if you guys didn't know i'm coming out with a cookbook late september on september 22nd and it has a lot of delicious recipes that you can find at trader joe's um if you guys are interested and want to find more information about it check out the link in the description box below there is a special pre-order campaign right now so if you guys pre-order the book you get a bonus video recipe you also get a discount code for Material Kitchen for the knives and the cutting board that I usually use on the video and lots of other goodies. So thank you so much for supporting me and that is my plug right there. But back to the food. <laughs> I love this bacon and it, it cooks up nicely for multiple dishes. Another item that I was really excited to find was this all natural heirloom whole chicken. Like I told you, I'm planning on making this recipe from Jamie Oliver called uh, Margarita Chicken. It has mozzarella cheese, it has, I think, it has mozzarella cheese, it has tomatoes, kind of like a caprese type of dish with roasted chicken. It sounded so delicious, although, it being 100 degrees outside, I don't know if I'm gonna turn on that oven this week, but we'll see, hopefully it cools down. But this was really great, and I love that a whole roasted chicken will last us a couple days. Every time I roast it up, we'll probably just eat like half of the chicken for dinner, and then the rest of the chicken, it could be used for sandwiches, salads, I chop it up, I make the kids sandwiches, and it usually stretches. Speaking of which, some essentials. I got these organic French rolls. They're the perfect size for kids. Um, Cece loves having sandwich. Her new thing is having bread and butter because she's so fancy that way. So we'll just toast up one of these small rolls. They're the perfect size and I really like them. They're pretty delicious. And then for a treat, Sometimes I'll let her have one of these and I'll mix it up with some Greek yogurt, just plain, because I know I recommended the Meyer lemon and raspberry to you guys in a previous uh, haul, Trader Joe's haul, until I realized how much sugar is when in one of these. This has 12 grams of, no, this has 16 grams of sugar. Like, that's a lot of sugar. So I only let her eat maybe like a tablespoon that I mix it with plain yogurt, but the flavor is really delicious, so I couldn't resist. We try to make it stretch. Try not to give her too much sugar, just because that girl can go wild. Um, then we have some mozzarella here. We always do pizza night, like 
Pizza night is a weekly thing at our house. I used to buy a lot of Trader Joe's dough for the pizza oven, but I recently found a really great pizza dough recipe from my friends at Feast of Fiction. Um, Ashley came up with a really, really, really easy and delicious pizza dough recipe in her cookbook, so you guys have to check that out too. Another essential, some milk. We go with organic grass-fed cow milk because I read somewhere that it's just a lot more pure and there's more um, omega-3. Just it's like a lot healthier for you. And now that Trader Joe's has it, it's so much cheaper than at other stores. Usually at other stores, it'll run you anywhere from $6 to, I've even seen like $8.99 at Erewhon, which is like, can you guys believe there's a store that's even more expensive than Whole Foods? Like I do not shop at Erewhon. However, this is only $4.99. So it's a great deal. And it'll last us like a week. Another essential um, is this organic basmati rice. I love basmati rice. We usually have it with like Indian food or we have it with Mexican food. I like making Spanish rice with it just because it falls apart a little bit more and it tends to like when the grains are more separated. So we use this and it's simple. It cooks up really easily. You can also make it fancy and make some Persian rice with it, but I haven't gotten to that skill level yet, so hopefully one day. But we just like cooking up plain white rice and then making um, some rice bowls and then adding some hummus. I found this new one. It's a tabbouli style hummus, which I will try and let you guys know how it tastes in a second. And also this labna, labna, a creamy tangy extra strained Middle Eastern style kefir cheese. I actually have a way to use this with some pita crackers that I got. So I will show you guys after I clear everything. Let me finish showing you the rest of the haul. Nate just reminded me that we went to this place called Courage Bagel and instead of cream cheese, she used labna, which is kind of like a cream cheese. But to me, I think it's just like extra thick Greek yogurt. So if you guys are familiar with labna, definitely comment in the section, comment let me know in the comments section below how else you use it. These are the new items on the brand new item rack. They actually have one of those. It's called new item shelf. So I found these freeze dried berry medleys and I've been really into freeze dried fruits lately. The reason being is that I always use them in my morning oatmeal. So. I have this jar of oats, I just refilled it, but basically because I don't have a lot of time, I just put some of these quick oats, some flax seeds, a dash of cinnamon, and freeze dried berries into a cup, add hot water, a splash of milk, and then wait five minutes while it cooks itself, and then I'll eat that for breakfast. Sometimes I'll add in a little bit of maple syrup too, but it's so quick and it's so easy, and I feel like the freeze dried fruits really flavor it up. And it just comes in like whole pieces like this, super easy. I'll either eat it whole, give some to Cece, or I'll just crush it up into my oatmeal. Super duper versatile. They only had, um, before they had them separated into strawberries, raspberries, or blueberries, but I'm really excited to see a berry medley. And then I got really excited to find this Bazaar Basket snack mix in the new uh, in the new section. However, upon buying it, I kind of regretted it just because it was kind of expensive just for a bag of nuts. It's something that only Nate and I will eat or actually just I will eat and I usually try to find something that the whole family could eat. So let me just give it a try and let you guys know how this tastes. This one's interesting because there's a blend of almonds, apricot, chickpeas, sour cherries, and pistachios. Like just that combination in itself really called my name but then I feel like I'm the only person that's gonna eat it, so it's kind of, you know, trying to make a $100 stretch here. So when you grab a handful, you get quite a bit of varieties. You get the dried apricots, which are pretty ginormous, the sour cherries, which is also pretty big, and then the chickpeas. I've never seen dried chickpeas in a trail mix snack before, so that's really interesting, and then pistachios and almonds. Let's give this a try. Hmm, it's actually pretty delicious. I think the texture of the dried chickpeas is throwing me off just because you get a different type of crunch. 
It's a very hollow crunch, but it's really good. Maybe I don't regret buying this after all. This sparkling watermelon juice. I tried it at my friend's place a while back and it was so delicious. I finally remembered about it when I went to Trader Joe's this time because they had it at the end cap and um, I had to get one. It's more like juice, I would say. It's a sparkling water juice. It's not like the LaCroix sparkling water, watermelon flavor where it has just the essence. This one has sugar in it. There's actually 12 grams of sugar, but it's fine. This is like a treat. If you guys wanted to, you can add some spirits in there, some tequila and vodka, and it actually tastes really good. There's this new beverage called High Noon that's also in one of these types of cans, and Nate loves it so much. He bought me one. Our friend, the same ones that recommended the watermelon juice to us, Jimmy and Alyssa, they also told us to try this High Noon Sun Sips. This is not from Trader Joe's. Nate bought this separately somewhere else. And um, they said that the peach flavor was really good, but we couldn't find those, but we got lime. So tonight I'm gonna try to combine these two together and I feel like it would be such a treat. My quarantine treat. I didn't think I would wanna buy this, except I sprayed it and I smelled it and it smelled so yummy. And in the summer, I just feel like the house smells kinda dank because it's so hot and you can't open the windows just have the ac running so i wanted to freshen our rooms up a little bit and so i found this super lemon room spritz it's made with lemon myrtle and spearmint oils and it smelled so delicious and fresh that i had to get it i got these eight mini ice cream cones filled with rich chocolate ice cream. It's the perfect size. It's pretty much true to size as you see here. It's very, very tiny, but I feel like it's the perfect size for a treat on a hot day. So we'll give her one of these if she slept or napped, honestly. <laughs> She hasn't been napping a lot lately, so if we if she if she actually goes down, we'll give her a treat. Okay, so now I really want to show you guys my snack hacks and the oatmeal hacks, so let me go ahead and get that done. So here is my little hack for the oatmeal. I originally got the idea from one of these oatmeal um what do you call this oatmeal, not packet, jars, instant oatmeal cups when we went to Santa Barbara and they were so delicious, but they were pretty expensive. It's like $2.50 for one of those cups. And I thought oatmeal is so ex uh, oatmeal is so cheap and it's just so easy to make that I wanted to make it at home. So what I usually do is just get like half a cup of quick oats. I actually ground half of it up just because I found that it gives it this nice chewy texture to the oatmeal after it's cooked. It's almost like oat flour, which is in one of these ingredients. Maybe not this one, but the other one. So I'll add half a cup to a larger cup. That, and then for mine, I like to add a teaspoon of chia seeds. Mix it up. A dash of cinnamon. And then to sweeten it up, depending on what fruits I use, I'll add a little bit of maple syrup, maybe like a teaspoon. And then like I said, the freeze dried berry medley. And what I like to do is just kind of like crush it up. They're very like hard like this. A little or a lot, it's totally up to you. And then I'll pour some hot water. I'll wait to add the milk at the end, but I'll usually add maybe a quarter cup more water than I use of oatmeal. So I'll add three quarters of a cup of hot water, stir it up, and then I just let it do its thing for like five minutes. So while my oatmeal is cooking, I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite new snacks. I forgot to show you guys this. Uh, I actually showed it to you from my last video because this is one of my favorite Trader Joe's items. And I finally got the right one this time. Last time I was looking for this whole wheat um, and flax seeds one, but I grabbed just the regular one. But my favorite is the whole wheat and flax seeds one. It's a pita bite cracker. <laughs> I don't normally use labna. This is a new thing. I usually use like hummus or just plain Greek yogurt, but because the labna is like a thicker Greek yogurt, we're gonna try that today. Whoa. It's like a cross between Greek yogurt and cream cheese. It smells really good. All right, here we go. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I am obsessed with this Trader Joe's 
item. It's the chili onion crunch. And the reason why I like this one, so many of you guys have told me about the Chinese one. And I feel like that one has a little bit too much spice in there. Like the, just the herbs and spices that they use. This one is a little more neutral where it goes with pretty much everything, everything like this. So I'll add some labna, a drizzle of my chili onion crunch. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It's not super spicy. It's just like the perfect bite. And then some Persian cucumbers. And then for this one, I'll go wild and use the dry girl, the dry farmed early girl tomatoes. And that is gonna be a perfect bite. Mm-hmm. Mm. You guys really have to try that. It was so good. And then I really wanted to try this tabbouleh styled hummus. Typically tabbouleh is made with like some kind of grain. Am I right? I make quinoa tabbouleh or I've seen like bulgur as well. But this one is in hummus style. So I thought it would be really yummy. And to be honest, I can probably build this the same way I built this. Instead of the llama, use the hummus. I don't know why I just blew that. Mmm. Is there dill in here? No, there's parsley. I taste a lot of herbs in here and it must be the parsley because it just kind of hits you. And then there's spearmint too. I like it. I think I like the original hummus better. That's probably my favorite one at Whole Foods. My favorite one, oh no, no, that's not right. My favorite one is the spicy avocado hummus, but they didn't have any more. So I went for this one instead. I hate trying new things sometimes because like the tried and true are so good that sometimes when I try the new stuff, I get disappointed. Like the chocolate hummus, don't waste your money. This one's just okay. I don't think I'll be buying it again. I remember looking on Instagram and so many people were raving about the dill pickle hummus. Mm -mm, not for me either. Our oatmeal is done and look at how the freeze dried fruit have hydrated back up and they look really good. So now I'm just gonna add a splash of milk, give it a good stir. And that to me is like the perfect oatmeal consistency, kind of porridgey, not too thick, not too thin, just right. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would spend 250 on one of these cups when you can just make it for like 50 cents probably. Mm. So how much did I end up spending and did all of this cost $100? I actually went over budget by $3. There were three items that I really wanted to get. The coffee plant that was $5.99. It, was, it wasn't a necessary buy, so I ended up putting it back. I originally grabbed two of the broccoli florets bag, but I already had one and I needed to get closer to 100, so I decided to put that back as well. And another item that I really wanted for lunch when I went to buy it was the flatbread pizza, which was an unnecessary buy because I could have easily made a sandwich with everything that I bought here. So again, I put that back. This brings me to a grand total of $103.20. I went over by $3.20, which isn't terrible. I have a good amount of snacks, a good amount of meat, and substantial grains and vegetables for the family for the whole week. Now, will this last me the whole week? Typically not. We usually try to order takeout one day a week to support local businesses and because we are too tired to cook on one of the days during the week, so that's our freebie day. And then sometimes I'll have to run out to the groceries to buy more milk um, if the kids decide to eat or drink too much. So that was my shopping trip for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys usually buy and what you have budgeted for groceries for your family. If you have a family of four, how much do you typically spend and what do you guys buy? Or if you're alone cooking for yourself, your significant other, I definitely want to know your budget because I think it would be fun to do more of these budget type of videos. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button if you guys want to see more shopping budgeting videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!